Good Hello, afternoon. good afternoon, everybody. Go ahead, Scott. Uh, welcome to the breakout session number two. We hope that you really enjoy the first part of the safety summit, um, and we welcome you to this group. Uh, we really pre appreciate you joining today with us. Uh, we're going to have presenters uh, with uh, Brian Harris, Julia Mills, and Jeff Mew, and we're going to discuss the topics of third-party quality assurance, uh, the BOLT program, as well as the root cause analysis piece with Jeff Mew. Uh, so thank you for joining and I'm going to pass it on to Brian Harris now and, and hope you enjoy this meeting. Thanks Scott and thank you all for joining us. We're uh, just going to review the third party quality assurance program here that we have in TES. Um, some of the things that we're going to discuss with you today um, would be um, Next slide, if you don't mind, Julia. Thank you. you know, we're going to talk a little bit about what is the 3PQUA program um, and what is the purpose of the monthly safety assessment report, uh, the metrics that this program generates, and then at the end, we'll wrap it up with um, some questions and answers here. So a little bit about what the program is. What we do is we you know, we, we put this out to bid with some quality, qualified vendors throughout North America, uh, some trusted partners that we've been doing this with for quite some time. And we put a qualified safety professional on the site. And their role is to observe what is happening on the project and basically audit the general contractor safety program uh, to determine its effectiveness and to see if it meets regulatory standards and identify any gaps in, in how we may assist that program to get better. Good, thank you. Um, you know, an important note about the three PQA program, you know, what these three PQA programs um, do not do is you know they are not there julie if you want to go back one slide they're not there to assume the role of the site safety manager uh, these folks do not get involved in day-to-day -day decisions on the construction project they're simply there to audit um, they may offer some best practices you know if they're engaged in that type of conversation but it's not something that they're necessarily there to do you know, the GC should really rely on their own internal or contractual site safety team to manage the site safety program on the project, you know, from a day-to-day -day basis. As we all know, the GC owns uh, construction safety on those projects until it is turned over to Amazon. Uh, the, you know, the 3PQA manager will conduct inspections either on a daily or a weekly basis. It depends on how your specific project would be enrolled. Uh, some of our larger, more complex projects, we put a rep on the site and they're there anywhere from 40 to 60 hours a week. With some of our smaller sort center type projects that are a little bit quicker paced, that don't necessarily have as high a level of risk uh, as our, our very, very large projects. You know, we tend to do those more on a regional approach where depending on the number of of projects that are in that region will dictate how frequently that rep is going to visit your site. You know, it's typically on a once a week basis if they're there on a regional approach. Um, and what these folks do is, is they are going to audit the program and they're going to take their weekly or daily audits in and aggregate them together and produce a monthly safety assessment report. And that is basically their only deliverable uh, is to provide this report on a monthly basis. It will get uploaded into a program uh, called Bolt, and then Julia is going to cover that a little bit later. But when they upload that information, it, it immediately becomes available uh, to the developer and the GC and Amazon as well. Um, you want to go to the next slide? And then what we do is we take the three PQA metrics and try to identify any potential gaps uh, in the safety program to help the general contractor improve the overall effectiveness in their program. 
uh, it's certainly not um, an I got you moment. You know, we've we've all spent a, a fair amount of time um, in construction safety management. So we understand that there are going to be uh, issues on a site that's not at all uncommon. But the the main goal of the program is is how do we react and adjust uh, when those issues are identified and improve the program overall. So that's really what we're looking for is continuous improvement uh, to make everybody's program a little bit better. All right, thanks, Brian. Appreciate that uh, coverage of the, the 3PQA program. Uh, Brian and I are teammates. We are part of the Transportation Engineering Services Safety Team. And um, as Amazon goes, we are a very new team. We just formed a few months ago. So we're really working to build a very robust safety culture within Amazon construction and uh, following continuous improvement methods and loops, plan, do, check, act. And um, the 3PQA program and BOLT, which I'm going to be discussing, um, really go hand in hand. Um, you know, 3PQA is a pilot program which has been implemented at a number of sites across uh, the North American construction facilities um, fulfillment organization already. And so um, we are implementing the 3PQA program at a number of sites within the Transportation Engineering Services uh, program as well. So um, we are using, a, it's a software system called Bolt. And um, you can see on the slide here, um, this is the landing page when you sign into Bolt. And essentially what it is, is a uh, contractor safety management system. So um, basically with the, the data that is compiled by the 3PQA aud auditors, um, they input the data into Bolt following a questionnaire that is administered on a monthly basis. So those auditors have a month to complete the checklist and it actually offers uh, around 150 questions that have to be completed and um, it's fairly comprehensive. There are a number of categories that we'll get into a little bit more detail later, um, but essentially this management system will allow us to gather safety related information across all of our construction sites. So currently we are starting um, in TES with just the three BQA uh, sites. But um, later, by the end of this year, we plan to implement an incident reporting module um, within Bolt at all of the TES sites, as well as the North American construction fulfillment sites. And we also have partners in the EU who have already implemented um, these applications and some other applications as well. Um, at the sites there and they're having tremendous success and they're gathering a lot of data and making a lot of positive impact to all with the goal of and um, you know the success of making the workplace safer for all of our construction partners because that's really what we care about the most. So um, depending on your role essentially um, if you are a developer or you are a contractor or subcontractor um, general contractors will have access to Bolt um, on a case-by-case -case, uh, basis. Essentially, whatever sites those project staff are assigned to, um, they will have access to view the audits in Bolt. And then once we roll out the incident reporting application, then um, those at those site levels will be able to access though, uh, their site data when there are incidents that are reported and be able to track corrective actions so on and so forth. So we're, like I mentioned, we're taking a phased approach. The MSAR will be is, is first. We are rolling that out currently. Um, that's already been rolled out at a, at, um, a number of NACF sites. And then um, we have our, our monthly audits, which shows out, up on a dashboard, which I will show some information of what those dashboard looks like as well. So, this is just a, a snapshot in Bolt of um, one of one of the question sections for the MSAR. So um, essentially, the auditors will go through each question, and um, they have a response that they can complete that'll give a number of points. So the most number of points you can have is sufficient evidence, five points, and if there's no evidence, then you'll get zero points. 
And so that will generate a score based on um, how the uh, contractor is performing that will, um, at the end of each month, then those folks at those sites will be able to go and see what the score is and not just for the whole site, but it's also broken down by the um, category for the um, audit, which is it's pretty cool. And then you can, from there, you'll be able to develop plans to make improvements. So for example, if if you're having challenges in scoring uh, low, for example, for steel erection, then um, we will want to meet with the 3PQA auditor and also with the general contractor uh, to essentially develop a, some kind of corrective action plan because we want to see a, a continuous improvement for, for everybody for all categories, right? So here is an example of the MSAR dashboard. And so you can see that um, there are overall monthly average scores for all of the sites that are being included in the, in this dashboard. And then you can also see on the right that there are the top category scores and then there's also a lowest category scores. But essentially, these are these are um, some of the categories that we have aerial lifts, scissor lifts and powered industrial trucks orientation and training, incident investigation and reporting, subcontractor management, hazard rec recognition and field observations, working at heights, material hoisting and rigging, electrical and hazardous energy control, lockout tagout, um, JHA processes, emergency preparedness, steel erection, iron working. Um, we've also added, we've added a couple more categories as well um, related to safety culture. So, um, you know, again, we always want to have continuous improvement. So, um, you know, as time goes by, we'll, um, you know, we can edit those questions. And um, we expect that the the three PQA auditors are going to have um, very good lines of communication with the developer and general contractor at those sites, and then also communicating with um, with us at Amazon. So what we really want is to foster open, transparent communication um, where everybody is involved. And, you know, this isn't like a gotcha thing. Um, you know, we, we really have the best intention to, um, you know, improve uh, safety performance and help build safety culture and improve safety culture. Um, you know, everybody has different approaches uh, to that. So by having um, these audits taking place on a monthly basis, we'll hopefully be able to see um, positive trends of improvement. And so again, this is more of the MSAR. This is our um, lowest category scores. And um, then we also have the average overall scores by site type. And so um, we do receive email notification um, and folks at the site levels who are the points of contact designated for uh, the developers and the general contractors and the general contractors health and safety points of contact receive emails for their sites, notifying them when an audit has been assigned on a monthly basis. And at the end of the month, um, if that uh, audit has not been completed, Bolt will send out um, a reminder email to let everybody know that the um, audit is close to being due. And if it gets completed, it will let you know that it's been completed. If it hasn't been completed, then it will show up as overdue. So we are able to see that data and um, look at the sites if those audits do go overdue. So don't be that guy. <laughs> um, so for full Bolt implementation, all the GES sites, we have to compile the points of contact. So between Amazon stakeholders and external stakeholders, whether it be the general contractor, uh, project management from the general contractor and their health and safety points of contact, and also the developer, there's around 10 people per site. And so um, GES has, it's, it's over 300 sites in North America. Um, and so, like I mentioned before, we're planning to implement safety incident reporting, um, which will basically help to automate our incident reporting process. If anybody of anybody in this audience has been a part of um, 
you know, an incident that has been reported at an Amazon site. Um, it can it can be a challenge because there's a lot of back and forth and there's meetings that are um, established and um, having this mechanism tracked in Bolt. Um, we that we expect that it will it will simplify everybody's lives a little bit and make it easier to track things as far as um, immediate um, corrective and then preventive actions. Um, also, safety observation reporting is something that we plan to implement in the future. Um, minutes of meeting is uh, a type of application that allows you to track meeting attendance if you have safety related meetings and also if you have meetings related to things such as incidents, safety stand downs, things of that nature. Um, if you have your own um, site based safety committee, you could track that in there. Uh, we're still working out some of the finer details of that. Um, but these are applications that have been rolled out in the EU so far with with fairly good success and also improvements in safety culture at their sites. Um, action management is where we track the actions related to incidents. And there's also a document library which houses a number of um, how-to documents and um, hopefully some standard work documents related to things such as incident reporting. Um, and then we have training content, which um, for folks that are um, part of the pilot programs, um, you should have received training either administered in KNAT if you work for Amazon or if you're an external party. Um, we did send out training documents in PDF format uh, via email. Um, so uh, we look forward to uh, getting your feedback on how you how you think the training is as far as the layout and level of understanding. All right. Any questions? I believe those are going to be shared uh, by Scott. Sorry, just waiting for my video to pop up. But, uh, you know, monitoring the chat group, uh, there were actually no questions that were posted. So I definitely appreciate the overall communication from our team. Um, you know, I think it was obviously Great communication there. There was a lot of actions that we're driving to create safer workspaces, you know, with the 3P implementation of the 3P QA process, as well as the tracking within Bolt. Uh, actually, we do have one question that popped up and it says, are the scores from the MSAR and the items from Bolt reflected in a VETA? No. No, they are right. not. So, uh, and we can kind of elaborate on that as the, these are two different uh, platforms. So the, they do not speak to each other. Um, Amazon is reporting in this process. Um, so we can actually review the information on our internal reports as well as going to the Bolt platform. Uh, essentially, they will not speak to each other. Um, but we do have the opportunity to continue those review processes to ensure that you know we are we are hiring the safest general contractors that we can to eliminate the exposure of hazards on our site locations. Um, but just making sure that we are following our processes that we state that we're going to implement, uh, as well as ensuring that our general contractors are going to follow that same process as well, implement their site specific safety plans. Uh, follow their processes, ensure they're adhering to the OSHA regulations and driving action to mitigate hazards on their site locations. Uh, we definitely appreciate all questions that are posted. Um, so if you want to post any more, please feel free to do so. That was a great question. So thank you very much for that. But I do not see any more questions in here. And Julia, thank you both for your time. Uh, you know, it's greatly appreciated. Love seeing this action that we're driving within our team to, you know, make sure that we have safe work site locations. Uh, if that is all the questions, I believe we are close to time. If that's correct, Let's just make sure. Just a minute, I'm trying to populate this information. I 
do not see any more questions popping up. So um, here pretty quickly, we will actually have Jeff Mew. Uh, he is our root cause analysis expert, uh, incident investigation expert. Uh, he is internal with Amazon. Um, I know he should be. Uh, um, so if you can give us just a minute, I know that we have a, a little bit of a break in between time here, but we do appreciate you joining this uh, breakout session. If you want to hang on, Jeff has some really good information in regards to root cause analysis, uh, incident investigation, and we really want you to participate in the overall communication with this is we're going to have a case study that he's going to communicate. Uh, we think it'd be great if you could post the questions in the chat group. That way we can follow up the process and ensure that, you know, he's he's giving all of the necessary information to really conduct a, a quality root cause analysis that we're on the engineering administrative controls uh, and not on the overall behavior of the associate or the person that has actually uh, entered the process. So give us just a minute and we will return back shortly. Thanks, Scott. 